In this video, we're going to explore the use of right triangles in helping us to understand more about trigonometric functions. If you have not yet watched the video on angle and degree measure, you may want to because you're going to have to know what the terms standard position is, terminal side, initial side. So if these things mean nothing to you, then go, go back one video and make sure you're familiar with these terms. All right, let's start. Let's say we have a coordinate plane and we have an initial side so our angle is in standard position and it goes through an angle of theta so we have our terminal side here now we have a point on our terminal side let's call that point x comma y alright if I drop the height from that point or height from point P down to the x-axis is y because our coordinates of P are x comma y. For the same reason, from here or origin, origin to that point is x. And let's call this line, I'm going to trace it in black here, or terminal side going up to that point, let's call it r. All right, well, now we can define or trig ratios or trig functions based on x, y, and r. And we already know how to do this. Let's let's go over that. Well, we already know SOH, CAH, SOKATOA. We already know this, which means we know that the sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse and the tangent of an angle equals opposite over adjacent. So that's something that you should be familiar with. All right, but what does that mean in this setup here? Well, according to the triangle that we just drew, our angle is here, so our opposite is here, and our hypotenuse is here. So in this case, the sine of an angle is equal to y, which is our opposite, over r, which is our hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is equal to adjacent, which is x, right next to our angle, over r, which is our hypotenuse. So the cosine of the angle is equal to x over r, and the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite, which is y, over the adjacent, which is x. So it's y over x. So this is a very helpful tool in physics when you ha have to look at the different components of an angle. It, it, it does come together very soon, so, so just be patient and you'll see the application of this soon. All right, but so far, this should make sense. All I did here was draw a right angle triangle in a coordinate plane and we now have, we have now figured out y over x because that's opposite over hypotenuse, x over r because that's adjacent over hypotenuse, and so on and so forth. So technically there's nothing new here yet. However, there are three more trigonometric functions that you should be familiar with, and I'm going to introduce them to you today. The first one is called cosecant. It is the inverse of sine, so it is equal to 1 over sine, which means according to what we just came up with earlier, right here, it is r over y. So we just inverse it, we find the recipro reciprocal. So cosecant written co, sorry, <laughs> written c, sc for short, of theta is equal to r over y. And again, all I did was flip the y and the r. All right, that is the first of the three new ones. The second one is secant, and that is the inverse of cosine. Now I know there's something disturbing about that, and I'm going to address it in a second. For short, cosecant is written as S E C. So we say sec for short, theta 
equals, and because it's the inverse of cosine, it's r over x. So we flip it. So it's equal to r over x. Now I know that you want to probably match cosine and cosecant. They sound similar. Maybe sine with secant. Don't do that. This is not an error in the video. It is, in fact, 100% true that sine and cosecant are inverse of each other, and cosine and secant are inverse of each other. So please make sure not to mix these two up. Cosecant is 1 over sine, and secant is 1 over cosine. All right, and the last one is pretty easy, easy to remember. It is what it, exactly what it sounds like, and it's cotangent. And cotangent is 1 over tangent. So cotangent, for short, cot, for short, is equal to, and again, we're flipping this, so it's equal to x over y. All right, now with all this newfound information, we can actually see what an example looks like. Okay, so in this example, we're being asked to find all six trig functions of an angle that's in standard position whose terminal side passes through 5 comma 12. So it's really important that we can visualize what's happening here. So let's draw it. So we have our coordinate plane. And then we have a point 5 comma 12. I'm just going to estimate that it's, you know, 5 is here, 12 is here, up here somewhere. And so the terminal side does, oops, it does this. Let's see. Go up to 5 comma 12. And let's just actually put the whole point there. 5. 12. All right, and then we drop the height. Let's make it red. That's the initial side. And then we have the angle there, beta. We don't know what it is, but we don't really need to know what it is. All we need to know is what is sine of that angle, cosine of that angle, you know, so on and so forth. All right, so we do know that going across from here to here, the measurement is 5. And going up from here to here, the measurement is 12. All right, so we don't actually have to have this written. That's OK. All right, we can cross this out. It doesn't want, don't want to be confused. OK, now we don't yet or some of us probably do, hopefully, but we don't officially yet know the measurement of our R, but we can do Pythagorean theorem to find it. Or we can recognize that this is actually a 5, 12. It's a right angle triangle, 5, 12. So that means that this has to be 13 right here. 5, 12, 13, Pythagorean triplet. If you don't remember, you do have to use Pythagorean theorem to find that out. All right, it's not always going to be a triplet either. So whatever it, if, if whatever it is, if you don't know what it is, then just use Pythagorean theorem. You can find it out. x squared plus y squared equals z squared. All right, cool. So r squared, actually. All right, so let's do this. We know that sine of the angle, and I'm taking all my information from here, the work we did earlier, and here, also what we did earlier. So we know that sine of the angle is equal to y over r. Well, y is 12, r is 13, and for good measure, x is 5. So sine of the angle is equal to y, which is 12, over 13. All right, so it's as simple as that when you have the setup complete. All right, let's do the rest cosine of the angle coming from here is equal to x over r. So cosine of the angle is equal to x, which is 5, over r, which is 13. So 5 over 13. Tan of the angle 
equals y over x. Again, coming from here, equals y over x. So that's 12 over 5. And we can just keep going here. Cosecant, oh, cosecant of the angle, that's 1 over sine. So we just flip what we've already done over, so 13 over 12. Secant of the angle is equal to, flip it over, you get 13 over 5, and cotangent of the angle is equal to 5 over 12. All right, so this may seem really, really abstract. Um, it does have an application, and I will definitely introduce it to you very soon.